BioBalance HealthCast episode 266, Testosterone and Parkinson's Disease. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counsel. One of our recent podcasts, we focused on the issue of tremors and the fact that everybody if they live long enough, will, or most people, not everybody, but most people will develop tremors of one kind or another. And, and we spend a lot of time talking about what are the different kinds of tremors and why does this matter and so on. So this week we thought we would focus on what research is beginning to show about the use of testosterone in people that have tremors. And so as you age, you, your body, male or female, will produce less and less testosterone. And testosterone is an essential hormone for all of us. There are, there are critical roles that it plays in our functionality. And what doctors are now trying to uh, make decisions about, doctors, the insurance company, the FDA, the whole medical staff. Research, is, yeah, is and NIH. How, how much testosterone, how is it delivered, what's it for, and is it just a marketing scam or a real medical inter- you know, All this stuff that we talk about a lot. So today we're going to talk about what research is beginning to show or is already known about people who have tremors, because most of us will develop tremors, and all of us will lose some of our testosterone. So if we start to replace the testosterone, will it impact the tremors that we develop? And there's some interesting new research, and so Kathy's going to tell us about that. There's some new research that they've done, and granted, it's not on people yet, it's on rats, of course, which is always, in some people's minds, suspect, but that's, what, that's how we find all, all of our new drugs, and that's how we test them. But Well, you start there. You they work start your way there. Up to yeah, people. that's yeah. the first step. So the first step in, in um, evaluating uh, Parkinson's disease in rats, they give rats Parkinson's disease. Uh-huh. I'm not going to ask how they do that because it's probably cruel. And they then give the rats back testosterone. They also take the, their uh, testosterone away mm-hmm. in a way that's surgical. And then they, the Parkinson's gets worse, and then they give them pellets of testosterone, mm-hmm. just like pellets that we use, only very tiny, small, rat-sized pellets. And they, they treated half the rats with testosterone and half of the Parkinsonian rats without anything and the Parkinsonian rats got worse and worse and worse progressed negatively and the rats that had Parkinson's before and got testosterone got better Mm -hmm. like all the way better and so now they've answered the question they've been asking since 2002 which is does low testosterone bring on Parkinson's? Uh-huh. Well, I guess they haven't answered the, the question, does it bring it on? But does low testosterone bring on Parkinson's? And should we treat Parkinson's with testosterone to decrease both the symptoms of Parkinson's, which is the imbalance, the tremor, the uh, actually the dementia that goes along with it, loss of memory and loss of ability to communicate, mm-hmm. and uh Many Parkinsonian patients at the very end are wandering around, have to be in nursing homes. So does they have now found that testosterone treatment in these rats will probably be just like people. We can give people with Parkinson's disease testosterone and bring them back. Now, there is a certain point where in all things, like in dementia or Alzheimer's or Parkinson's that you reach a point where we can't bring you back with almost anything. We can't recover what was lost. But in the early stages of Parkinson's, it appears that replacing testosterone does help and does reverse the process. So you have to intervene. And this is what we say in our book. There's a window of time until your receptor sites for (coughs) testosterone are ultimately dead and not Mm -hmm. going to be responsive. So what you're saying is the research is showing that the sooner you start to replace the testosterone, the less severe the symptomology of Parkinson's appears to be? Well, there's a damage that's done. Mm -hmm. 
with Parkinson's to, to the neurons when they are deprived of dopamine, which is what Parkinson's is, basically part of your brain stops making dopamine. When they're deprived of dopamine, they die. Those, those neurons those die, neurons. and you can't get them back after a certain point. Right. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the physical damage has been done, and we can't go back. It's like when you have Alzheimer's, your brain shrinks. Well, at a certain point, it shrinks so much that it's it's not going to regrow, right. and you can't recover all of your faculties. No, the goal right now with that seems to be to stop the deterioration, to sort right. of freeze it in place. Right. Because they don't conceptualize at this point a way to replace what's been lost. Right, and so that just stops you where you are. It doesn't bring you back. So the research that you're talking about, the, the first <clears throat> research that you referenced was done at Rush University mm -hmm. by a Dr. Phelan. Uh, Parham, sorry. Parham. Uh, Parham. And he used pellets, bioidentical pellets, very similar to the ones that mm -hmm. you use in people. Exactly. In rats, and was able to reverse completely the symptoms of Parkinson's in the rats that he gave the pellets to. Yes. And the control group didn't get any better. Right. They and continued to progress. And that research was funded by the, the NIH, the National mm -hmm. Institute of Health. Mm -hmm. And they're continuing to do more research and with the goal being move up with the, as a, the legal protocols for doing research on people are pretty <coughs> substantial. Yes. And universities have these expansive uh, committees and forms that have to be filled out and you have to get permission and all this stuff before you ever try something on a human being, mm -hmm. even a volunteer. Uh, but once you have that, you progress into treating, testing it on people to see if it's something we can do. Uh, you're quoting some other research where the... Uh, the treatment of men who already are diagnosed with Parkinson's and who receive daily doses of transdermal testosterone mm -hmm. don't experience a reversal, but they do experience an alleviation of, of the symptomology symptoms. if they receive it early in the progression of the disease. Right. That's so, right. So, so we need to make that clear. So that's a... A step ahead. So we mm -hmm. try it on rats with pellets because that's the best way to give them their testosterone. Then they tried it on men, a group of men with a control group, meaning with a group that got nothing. So par men with Parkinson's who had nothing versus they're getting daily testosterone uh, patches. So they compare these two groups. That's how studies are done, mm -hmm. one with a drug, one without. And they found that the symptoms of Parkinson's that we associate with Parkinson's, shuffling and, and slow walking and imbalance and falls and inability to remember things and that, that blank face, re they reversed. Uh -huh. So they did reverse it with testosterone only no other medication, right. then they also found that the quality of life that they had lost mm -hmm. with their low testosterone came back. They felt... <laughs> Which wasn't what they were looking for. That was sort of serendipity. That was like an they aside. They were looking for Parkinson's symptoms. They were looking for Parkinson's symptoms, and then they found the quality of life came back. People were happy to be alive again. Mm -hmm. They had a sex drive. They had energy. They were building muscle. They were... They looked more like themselves. They... They, their brain worked faster, so of course they were feeling better. And that was an aside, yet I think that's a very significant piece of this because it's not just about disease, it's about how you feel and, and your whole life. And, and the physiology of that, what's fascinating to me as a non scientists, <laughs> uh, is they teach us about levels of the development of the brain and what they talk about the old brain or the alligator brain, mm -hmm. primitive brain, then the midbrain and then the, the new mm -hmm. brain. We're all, and the new brain is where all of the thinking and memory and, and active brain, uh, brain activity that involves... Even sensory muscles, ever, I mean, that's, it's all in the upper brain. It's all in the upper Just brain. Just your breathing but and the, your heart rate is in the lower brain. But the core for dopamine mm -hmm. is in the old brain. Mm -hmm. And what we find is that testosterone <clears throat> facilitates the delivery of dopamine to the brain and the mm -hmm. delivery of blood flow to the brain. Mm -hmm. To so that very you, area. 
to that very area. So when you re-energize that and get those things uh, working better, because they have what they need, it's like the gas tank is not empty, mm -hmm. then the rest of the brain blossoms in terms mm -hmm. of its impact on your thinking capacity, your muscle development, your strength, your waist. I mean, all the items mm -hmm. that we identify in our book about symptoms of testosterone deficiency mm -hmm. show improvement if you replace testosterone. And they, they, maybe we should reference a little bit the difference between free testosterone and total testosterone. Right, right. So, so um, testosterone is transported in your bloodstream that's where it's stored and it, it circulates at all times. So it's stored as an inactive type of, um, of a hormone. So it has a protein on it that blocks its ability to attach to cells. So most of your testosterone that you produce is inactive and attached to a protein. There's a small amount that is your active part. That's really the only thing that your body sees, and it's called free testosterone, free of binding, free testosterone. So free testosterone's the only testosterone that gets to your brain. None of that other stuff goes anywhere. It can't get past the blood-brain barrier. So free testosterone goes to your brain, so the more testosterone you have, the lower the binding protein, the more you're getting to your brain. So. Okay. So I don't look at total testosterone like that's significant at all because if it's not going to your brain, it's doing very little for you. I mean, everything starts in your brain. So when most men or women get a blood test to measure testosterone, what's mm. asked for is a total testosterone measure. And that's the wrong thing to ask for. There's two things wrong with you. that test. Okay. There's two things wrong with that decision to just look at a total. Because it's something that, you know, we like, doctors, we like to remember like one number, one thing, so yeah. that it's a trigger so that we can go on with our it's discussion. It's like an alarm bell that goes off. If you hear a number yeah. that's too high, suddenly you're like, wait a minute, that's too high. Or too low. Or so too you kind of keep yeah. all these numbers in there. Well, we were trained that 250 or 300 was normal, but in my training, there's no guy out there that has a 250 or 300 that's functional. That's total testosterone. So when the AMMG and the A4M, the anti-aging preventive medicine groups, mm -hmm. did their research, they found that the normal testosterone total, if you're just going by total, most people with 400 and above have enough free testosterone to then make them normal. Now... That's because they're trying to comply with all the doctors that just look at a total. Right. In in our world, though, in the in the preventive medicine world, we look at total testosterone just kind of like, is he making it? Is he making testosterone? Right. Or is it is it um, not being made? And there's a lot of free testosterone. So. Well, you're saying he, but you mean he, he, he or, or she? Yeah. So I don't even look at totals in women because it means nothing. And if somebody sees a high total in a woman, well, and we've done podcasts on the fact they get that worried about totals that. for lab tests are almost all historically men's totals. Right. So, so when we look at, so what your doctor should look at is your free testosterone. And for men, free testosterone should be 129 or above. I don't know exactly how they came up with that number, except they did the research. So 129 free testosterone is what we're looking for. If you have less than that, you're not getting enough to your brain. So whatever the total is required to get your free to 129, that's where we're going. The, the total doesn't matter. If the total is top number in on the labs is 1,200, if your total was 2,000, I don't care what it is if your free is 129. But you've had some encounters with other doctors who are afraid of that. Oh, they freak out and they make my patients very scared over nothing, but they don't understand. Well, they have no negative They've not data thought for a about it. total. They have negative data for a lower total. Right. But they learn that marker total. And anything above that. They're just looking at the lab them. test. Right. They're going, oh, well, that's too much. They don't realize that we're looking at, at a different test. In any case, free testosterone goes down as we get older, okay, uh -huh. all of us, because the, the protein from the liver goes up. That binds it up. So it was one of those things that helps age us. As our, as our testosterone may be the same, our free testosterone goes down with age. So, 
we can't combat combat the liver. Mm -hmm. We can combat estrogen also stimulates that protein. So we can control that. In any case, we need to have a free testosterone of 129 to get to the brain to then stimulate all our neurotransmitters, especially dopamine. So when you have enough free testosterone in your brain, it then stimulates blood flow to the area that makes dopamine. Dopamine goes up, Parkinsonian symptoms go down. So it would seem logical that if you have a disease like Parkinson's that negatively impacts the amount of dopamine that you have Mm -hmm. and can use. If you have a hormone like testosterone that increases the access of dopamine to the brain, Mm -hmm. that it should be a positive blend of treatments. It should be. But that's common sense. That's not medical protocol. Mm-hmm. And so they are doing all these tests and all these research. And they don't even think it's common sense. <laughs> and they don't even think. But, but you would think, well, uh, absent some negative marker or warning that says, oh, but if you give this level of testosterone, you know, you're going to have a heart attack. And there it are doesn't that do say that. that. It doesn't it, do that. And it doesn't do that. We, so gradually they test all these uh, foibles, distractors, and prove them non-impacting and that what they're left with is the conclusion that replacing testosterone might be a damn good idea right and they, that's what they came up in the stud in this study and the study was in the 2010 literature so that was from emory university mm-hmm. so they've done several other tests with parkinson's and men only and they found that the reversal of the symptoms was a surprise again uh-huh. <laughs> that you know they they didn't really didn't think this was going to work it's just too it's too simple to take you back takes you back to an earlier environment hormonal environment which then reverses the changes if you catch it soon enough now testosterone itself stimulates dopamine production okay so it goes to the cells and makes more dopamine which is great, but it also increases blood flow to the area mm-hmm. of the brain. Now, if you're if you're a female and we give you testosterone, it also improves blood flow to the part of your brain that is that is the memory for labeling and it's usually a short-term thing, short-term memory for names, places, uh, street names, you know, Facts you're trying to anything that you're trying to discuss and you need a noun that is a name, you can't remember it if you don't have testosterone because that's why my, that my part wife of your brain says, you know, that watch me call that goes into the thing. No, she doesn't day. do that anymore. No, she doesn't it's because she's treated. So that's that. But that's what my mother did. My mother, after 52, never had a complete sentence because she couldn't remember anybody's name or the house or 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 the the store she wanted to go to or the name of the shoes or the, you know she could remember nothing and i looked at her and i went holy moly i can't be her i'm not going to be her right. i can't live like that and then when they took my ovaries out i was her well and until they, start, they gave they me my hormones their sentence with a pretty clear indication of what they're going to try to say and then halfway through the sentence they've lost the handle on the the language, the terminology, the the verbiage. It's the, always a label, though. Yeah. It's always what they they don't learn. They don't lose usually, unless it's progressed. Right. They don't lose the the whole thought of the Concept. sentence. Right. They don't lose but what they, they want to say, they, yeah, but they can't even they can't think of even names of colors. I mean, it gets really depressing to try to talk to somebody like this or to be that person and not be able to say the words. Well, and, and if you know yourself as having been a person who could always do that and now you can't do it, you really get frightened. Something's really, really wrong with me. And that's what your experience was. Yeah. It's it, it's like something happened. They When they took my ovaries out, they took my brain out too. We have a so elsewhere on the website, we have testimonies from people that have come in and, and there's one testimonial where this woman comes in, and Kathy says it's not an unusual experience. She, she comes in and says, I need you to tell me I'm not crazy. And she just started crying. And she's like, I don't want to be crazy. And then she comes back in and says, I'm not crazy because the testosterone worked. A lot of people say that. Yes. That's a very common yes. thing is they're crying and saying, I'm not crazy. Thank God I'm not crazy. You know, it's that reassurance that we can fix this. This okay. is not something because everybody thinks of 
crazy is something you can't fix. Because you can't fix. But so, so, so to wrap this up, basically, we're wanting you to know that there is data, there is research being done and positive returns on the research that show the impact of replacing testosterone if you already have Parkinson's, but the medical, com medical community generally is not claiming that yet. Uh, so the reason that we're sharing that with you is so that you can have those conversations with your doctor. You know, would you consider this? And, and the, the biggest piece, may, most helpful piece may be, even if it doesn't impact Parkinson's per se, the global quality of life improvement that comes with replacing testosterone is worth the effort. But you need to have your free testosterone level over 129 or you haven't hit the mark and, and you won't, won't feel it. So if right. they just give you a piddly so, little dose, which is very common, people, if, if someone... Past five. If the yeah, doctor we'll doesn't that. really want it, they they're okay, okay. They give you the lowest a lowest dose so that and they can be right and say it didn't work. So you need to get your blood your free testosterone over one twenty nine for you to, to actually know if it's gonna work. And this it's just one more thing. It's very common for patients who have had prostate cancer to have Parkinson's. Yeah. And part of that has to do with they went years with low testosterone, which is what brought in the prostate cancer. Not high, low. Low testosterone, prostate right. cancer, then Parkinson's. So after you're past your treatment time, there are new guidelines now that allow you to take testosterone. Mm -hmm. So it is still possible if you find the, the right physician. Right to get testosterone after prostate cancer if it's been completely resected so or so or being laser a knowledgeable and active participant in your own health care once again thank you for listening email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com you can find the biobalance healthcast on itunes and on youtube for more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BiobalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BiobalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.